Hey everybody, take two. I'm gonna try to do this without so much rambling. <laughs> Somebody wrote to me today and they asked if, you know, perhaps the, uh, the remedy to surveillance capitalism is just for each and every one of us to, and he didn't state it this way, but this is how I'm gonna summarize it, to basically sneak around, you know, and try to prevent the surveillance capitalists from collecting information on us by you know, being very selective about which devices we use, which applications we use, which, you know, what digital tools, what platforms, what social media that, you know, if, instead of using this, this smartphone, this Huawei smartphone that I'm using to shoot this video, instead I should use a flip phone and keep it turned off when I'm not making a call so that, you know, it can't be used to track me. But here's the thing. I don't mind the tracking. In fact, the, uh, the My Timeline feature, which allows me to go back and see where I was on any given day and where I moved over the course of any given period of time is very useful to me. You know, when it comes to tax time, you know, most of you have, a, you have jobs, so you don't have to worry about taxes. Your employer takes care of that, and then come tax time, you get this little refund. It's like, oh, that's nice. Whereas somebody like me who doesn't have a job has to, you know, at tax time, come up with a serious chunk of change to send to the government. And, you know, my life is such that the money that comes in, it goes right back out again. You know, my, my income basically equals my expenses. I don't, I, there's no way I can set a third of that aside, you know, to send to the government. So I have to be really, really, uh, I don't want to say creative, but uh, exact. And I, I can't miss any potential deduction. So at tax time, I go to my Gmail, I go to Amazon.com, I go to PayPal, and with those three sources, and with uh, the Google, you know, timeline for, for travel expenses, I can basically reconstruct all of the business purchases that I made over the course of a year. And, you know, it's, it's vitally important when you are a small business person to know how much you've spent and to be able to justify it, to have evidence, to have documentation that you can show to the IRS to say, look, I really did buy this piece of equipment. Here's the order from Amazon. This is the date. This is how much it cost. You know, usually they don't ask for that kind of stuff. Uh, but, you know, if you do get audited, you have to be able to document what you claim to have spent. So Amazon.com has been a lifesaver. You know, I couldn't tell you how many places I've lived in the last 20 years, but Amazon knows. And I can go to Amazon.com, log into my account and see, get all of those addresses, you know, the street address, zip code. I can even reconstruct from my purchases when I made particular moves. Sometimes that is useful. If the data is available, you know, the data that I throw off with my activity, if some party is collecting it, if it's available to me, then the fact that that data has been gathered and collected and, and made available is a boon to me. I don't want to hide from Amazon. I don't want to hide from Google. You know, I don't want to hide from PayPal. I mean, that would be ridiculous. <laughs> you know, me trying to prevent PayPal from accumulating data on how I spend money, that's not to my advantage at all. You know, so I guess if, if one is thinking, what, what do we need to do in order to alleviate the harms of surveillance capitalism, we really need to figure out what the harms are. And so far, the thing that people reach for, because it's a familiar concept, is privacy, that this is eroding our privacy. The things that seem really sort of dystopian about the current moment are not that, you know, companies like Google or Amazon or PayPal know where we spend money or, you know, what time we spend money or what sorts of things we spend money on. What's far more creepy to me is that I mean, I've been kicked off of Facebook, so, you know, it's not a part of my life anymore, but I still, I know what's going on in terms of things like Facebook has said, you may not mention the name Paul Joseph Watson unless you are condemning him. You are free to mention him to condemn him on Facebook, but you cannot mention him without condemning him. If you do, your post will be removed. And if you persist, your account will be deactivated. That's freaking Orwellian. You know, that is dystopian. And that's not the surveillance capitalist companies, you know, misbehaving in order to make money. That's the surveillance, surveillance capitalist companies basically becoming authoritarian thugs to satisfy their employees and their, you know, their users. <laughs> and me, you know, getting rid of my smartphone is not going to change that. 
I'm not angry at the person who uh, who asked me this question and made these particular suggestions. I mean, he's being helpful, but um, it is not it is not incumbent upon individuals to try to mitigate and undo the systemic damage done to our culture, you know, by artificial intelligence enabled capitalism. And I'm not a raging anti-capitalist. You know, I, I think that uh, it, it's fairly clear that capitalist countries provide for their citizenry better than authoritarian centralized economies. And it's pretty clear that when China adopted a capitalist methodology, you know, it kept the name communism, it kept the authoritarian structure of the, the Communist Party, but it threw out the, the idea that the state is going to micromanage the economy and it invited in foreign investment. And, and basically, you know, it joined in the capitalist fray and its people are demonstrably better off, you know, a couple decades down the line. So I'm not against capitalism. I just want... It's just... It's, it's galling to me that so many of us can be struggling in a way that our parents didn't have to, and we have to constantly scramble to reinvent ourselves and to try to find some economic relevance when you know our previous economic relevance has been eroded out from underneath us, and it's our responsibility to do that, even though corporations like Amazon, Apple, Google, you know, you know the G Mafia gang, they require us to generate the data so that they can make money. You know, they require us to purchase some of their products, like in the case of Amazon or Apple, you know, or Huawei. It's not an American company, but still it's, it's in that universe. They need us at a time when we're not doing well and they're doing great because they have us to feed on. It's not so much a matter of me being tracked by some totalitarian entity. It's just, I don't like being, you know, the paving below the feet of this striding giant. I want to be included. I want some consideration. I want, not just for me, but for my kids and people in situations like mine. You know, people who don't have access to the kind of job that is going to provide the sort of living that we used to think of as normal. You know, one where you you basically knew from month to month and week to week how much money would be coming in. You knew what your expenses would be. And there was very little possibility that it was all going to collapse out from under you ever, much less, you know, every other year. So I said I was going to try to do this one with, uh, with less ranting. Well, I did it with I've done it with different ranting. <laughs> and when I say this one, I'm, I'm not talking about this video in comparison to yesterday's video, but this video in comparison to the one that I just shot, and I'm not going to use because it's too long and too rambly. So uh, I'm going to stop here. I'm even going to avoid the temptation to try to summarize the, the territory that I've covered in this video. And uh, I will just leave you with the promise that I will continue the struggle to articulate this point of view day after day for the remainder of this year. I hope you'll join me, and I hope that you'll stay well.